After studying this module, you shall be able to know what are the financial instruments and why they are needed. Learn what are equity and preference capital. Know the various types of derivatives. Know what are depository receipts. Financial markets are markets which provide a link between savers of funds and users of funds. Savers of funds put their funds in various investment outlets and would save more when they have incentive in terms of capital appreciation and rate of return. Savings in an economy shall go up if the savers invest in different instruments, if the return is attractive and corresponding risk is lower. Different financial instruments have come in to existence to meet the varying needs of savers and investors. The inadequacy of meeting the demand for funds in the domestic market leads any country to seek funds from international markets as well. Instruments of financial markets. Financial instruments can be divided into two segments depending upon the maturities of the financial claim. Capital markets instruments. Capital market instruments deal in financial claims which have maturities of more than one year. They are typically expected to generate a higher annualized return to investors. These instruments serve the purpose of providing long-term sources of funds for the companies. These securities are divided into two. For example, the credit ship securities like bonds or debentures or ownership known as equities and preference shares. Capital market instruments include equity shares, preference shares, depository receipts that is ADRs, GDRs, IDRs, debentures, bonds, mutual funds and derivatives. Equity and preference share capital. So let us first discuss about equity shares. It is the most popular method of raising long term finance by the companies. Equity shareholders or common shareholders are owners of the firm and the equity shares are an evidence of their ownership. Public and private companies issue equity shares in order to raise capital from the public or through private placement. Equity shareholders earn their return in the form of dividends and capital appreciation. These shareholders have voting rights for various crucial decisions taken by the company. The dividends on equity shares is not fixed and not compulsory to declare. Also, it may vary from time to time depending upon the available profits. Dividends and long-term capital gains are exempt from income tax. Once equity shares are made available to public, they are freely traded on the recognized stock exchange. These equity shareholders do not get preference with regard to dividend and repayment of capital. However, at the time of liquidation, the equity shareholders have the right to receive all the assets and earnings of the company after the obligations of preference shareholders and debenture holders have been met. Funds can also be raised through right issue. The existing shareholders have right to entitlement of further shares in proportion of their existing shareholding known as preemptive rights. However, it is not compulsory for shareholder to buy the right shares. Nowadays, companies are giving differential voting rights of the DVRs, shares or non-voting rights shares. Rate of dividend is generally high on these shares. These shares do not confer any voting rights. Now, Coming to the preference shares. Preference shares also constitute share capital of the company. Preference shareholders have preferential rights to get dividend first at a specified rate and to get repayment of capital at the time of liquidation of the company over equity shareholders. However, they do not have voting rights. Raising funds through preference shares is not a very popular method of raising finance in India. However, they are quite popular in other countries. Different types of preference shares. 
the first one is cumulative and non cumulative in case of cumulative preference shares if the company doesn't declare dividends in a particular year due to insufficient profits the unpaid dividend gets accumulated and can be paid in future year in case of non cumulative preference shares if the company is unable to pay dividends in part or full in a particular year due to insufficient profits the preference shareholders lose that amount the second one is convertible and non convertible the convertible preference shares convertible preference shares are those which can be converted into equity shares after some specified period investor will get dual benefits of fixed component in the form of dividend until they hold it as preference shares and capital appreciation when they convert it into a ordinary share they are called as hybrid instruments as they have characteristics of both equity and debt non convertible non convertible preference shares are the one which do not have privilege of conversion into equity shares redeemable and non redeemable redeemable preference shares are those shares wherein the company redeems at an agreed date in the future non redeemable non redeemable preference shares are those shares where the company will not redeem they are called perpetual preference shares depository receipts depository receipts are the instruments which are used to raise money in the international markets these receipts are issued by the depository against the underlying shares depository receipts are issued when a foreign company wanted to list its already publicly traded shares or debt securities on a foreign stock market these can be global depository receipts the most common of the depository receipts american depository receipts indian depository receipts or european depository receipts an adr is listed and traded on exchange based in united states a gdr can be traded on non us markets such as london luxembourg etc global depository receipts or the gdrs it may be defined as a financial instrument which is used by issuer to raise capital simultaneously in two or more markets through a global offering GDR is a negotiable certificate which usually represents company's traded equity or debt the underlying shares correspond to the GDRs in a fixed ratio say it can be 1 GDR is equal to 10 shares or GDR is equal to 1 share depending upon the price at which the GDR is being offered an american depository receipt or ADRs they are traded in united states ADRs are the form of instruments like GDRs which are traded in US markets only. It represents ownership of shares of any foreign company for example ADRs of Reliance. ADRs provide US investors with easiest way to invest in non US securities in their home country itself which is traded on the US stock exchange like NYSE or Nasdaq. These GDRs and ADRs are as good as shares for international investors except that they don't entitle the holder the voting rights until they are converted into the underlying shares. Indian depository receipts or IDRs. IDRs are the financial instruments like global depository receipts and American depository receipts which have shares as the underlying asset and denominated in the local currency that is Indian rupee. foreign companies can raise capital in india through idrs on indian stock exchanges in india standard chartered came out with an idr issue so far only which have raised close to 700 million dollar from indian market the idr is listed at nse for trading let us take an example suppose a steel company in india wants to list its already traded shares in the new york stock exchange or nyse in the form of adr after fulfilling the requirements for dr listing broker of us would purchase indian shares and then deliver them to a local custodian bank of the depository bank the depository bank would be an american institution that issues adrs in us market 
after verification of delivery of shares by the custodian bank the shares can now be issued in the us stock exchange the bank then deliver the adrs to the broker who initially purchase them adr ratio is determined and all adr transaction shall take place in us dollars on nyse the broker will aim to find the best price of the adr the broker will compare the price of the domestic market converted in dollar price and adr price if adr of steel company is traded on bombay stock exchange at 30 dollar and adr is traded at 32 dollar a broker will aim to buy more local shares from india and issue adrs on nyse this buying will lead to parity between both the prices debentures and bonds a bond or debenture is a fixed income security which is issued by borrowing unit under a borrowing arrangement under agreement which is known as debenture indenture the issuer of the borrower has to pay periodic interest payments to the holder on specific date generally interest on bonds is paid in every 6 months these bonds may be issued by government public or private company these bonds may be of various kinds which are described here the types of debentures the first one is convertible and non convertible bond convertible debentures those debentures which may be converted into equity shares of the company at the holders option at a pre specified date in future the conversion price may be decided at a time of issuance of bond non convertible bonds are pure vanilla bonds as they are purest form of debt instrument and are redeemed by repayment as per the terms and conditions zero coupon bonds are deep discount bonds these bonds are redeemed at the expiry of a specified period at the face value and issued at discounted value no interest is payable during the lifetime of the ddb idbi issued in 1992 ddb of face value of rupees 1 lakh redeemable in 25 years at the issue price of rupees 2700 since the face value of redemption price is far higher than the issue price they are called deep discount bonds since there is no coupon on these bonds they are known as zero coupon bonds the callable bonds in case of a callable bond the issuer has an option to retire or redeem the bonds at any time after an initial stipulated period is over if the company opts to redeem the debt the holders have no option but to accept the redemption value in case market interest rate falls below the coupon rate these callable bonds may be called back by the company for repayment to reduce their cost of borrowing puttable bonds puttable bonds are one where the holder has an option to get the bond redeemed at any time after the stipulated period if the coupon rate is less than the prevailing market interest rate then the bond holder may get the bond redeemed and the amount can be reinvested elsewhere at the current higher market rate junk bonds junk bonds are speculative in nature and are high risk and yield bonds the coupon rate of interest is high these bonds have a low no credit rating they are generally issued at deep discount price compared to the face value therefore they generate huge return on redemption government bonds government bonds also known as gsex or gilts are issued by or on behalf of the central government or the state government the payment of interest is guaranteed by the government three types of t bills are 91 days 182 days and 365 days issued by rbi issued at discount and redeemed at par on maturity secured bonds when a bond is backed by a specific asset it is termed as secured bond it means that in case the issuer is unable to pay the interest or repay the principal balance bond holder would get something of value 
unsecured bonds when a bond is not backed by any asset it is termed as unsecured bond if bankruptcy occurs repayment is not guaranteed since there is no security of any asset mutual funds mutual fund is a professionally managed basket of securities offering an opportunity to a common investor to invest at a low cost it is a trust that pools the savings of common investors who share common financial goal mutual funds issues units to investors in accordance with the quantum of money invested by them and as per the scheme suggested by them a mutual fund is set up in the form of trust which has sponsors trustees asset management company and custodian mutual funds can be classified into growth balanced and income schemes depending upon the investment objectives such schemes can be open ended or close ended schemes depending upon the maturity period open ended are the ones which do not have fixed maturity period and close ended on the other hand are those funds which have a stipulated maturity period derivatives a derivative is a financial instrument or a financial contract whose value is derived from one or more underlying assets which are called underlying derivatives can be tangible assets like wheat cotton or any other commodity and intangible like interest rates weather or index etc or financial instruments like equity or bond financial derivatives include forward future options swaps etc the distinction between financial and commodity derivatives depends on the kind of underlying asset in commodity derivatives the underlying instrument is a commodity like wheat cotton sugar pepper turmeric natural gas gold silver and so on in a financial derivative underlying instruments are stock t bills bonds foreign exchange stock index etc derivative market originated in the commodity in usa primarily for price discovery and hedging for agriculturists later on the market for financial derivatives like stocks bonds currencies dwindled forward contracts forward contract is an agreement between a buyer and a seller wherein the seller is under obligation to deliver a specified asset of specified quality and quantity to the buyer on a future date and place as specified the buyer in return has to pay the seller a pre negotiated price in exchange for the delivery forwards are not marketable once a firm enters into a forward contract there is no convenient way to trade out of it because it takes place between person to person if any party wants to reverse it the other party must agree to that these contracts are one to one contracts and therefore known as over the counter or otc contracts future contracts a future contract is a standardized contract between two parties at a price buy or sell a specified asset of standardized quantity and quality agreed today the future prices for delivery and payment at a specified date in the future a forward contract enforced into through recognized exchange is known as futures contract options contracts options contracts are contracts which give the buyer of the contract with the right but no obligation to exercise the contract there are two types of options call and put options each option gives an opportunity to take advantage of futures price movements without actually having a futures position a call option gives the holder or buyer the right to buy or go long and underlying at a specific price on or before an expiration date but doesn't create any obligation on his part that is he is not compelled to exercise it a put option holder on the other hand gives the holder the right to sell one go short and underlying at a specific price on or before the expiration date this too shall be exercised only if it is profitable for him to sell
swaps a swap is a form of derivative which involves an agreement between two parties wherein one asset is exchanged in future with another or it may be predetermined stream of payments that are exchanged for another swap contract involves several futures exchange cash flows the cash flows of a swap can be determined in advance or customized with reference to a specific market interest rate such as libor that is london interbank offer rate or the mybor that is mumbai interbank offer rate at the time of settlement a difference is to be paid by the party who is obligated to pay more at the settlement there are two types of swaps namely the interest rate swap and the currency swap let us summarize what we have learned in this module the financial markets act as intermediary to bring together savers of funds and the user of funds financial instruments are the medium through which transaction of funds take place equity share capital is the most popular method of raising finance and it gives ownership to shareholders with respect to the proportion of their holding in the company preference shares are though not very popular medium of raising funds but it carries preference to get dividend or repayment of capital over common shareholders debentures or bonds are fixed income instruments and have specified maturity and redemption amount depository receipts are another method of raising finance in the international market mutual funds a financial innovation provide opportunity to a common man to invest their savings in the pool of investment at a very low cost derivative instruments are financial instruments which have underlying security these instruments help in price discovery and used as effective tool in hedging swaps another form of agreement wherein exchange of payments take place